going on everyone? Good morning. Today Stephanie and I are here at Dr. Bill Campbell's lab again. Um, so we had to get up super early to come in to do the metabolic rate testing, uh, body composition analysis, and water composition by electrical impedance. Uh, just because we had to be fasted and if we drank any water or ate anything, it would throw the results off a little bit. Uh, but anyway, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so yeah, I'll check in with you guys when we get in there. How goes it? Danielle. Sheila. Sheila, nice to meet you. Hi, hey, I'm Jeff. Danielle. Danielle, nice to meet you. Oh, well, I'll start with Danielle so I can get naked quick. Yeah. <laughs> get that, get that over with. Do you guys have any questions? Underwear or short? Yeah, yeah. Are you, are you commando? <laughs> <laughs> well, we can work around that. Yeah. I can hold the time. <laughs> Thank sure. you guys so much for being here Thank so you. early. How many people do you think you have subjects? Oh, here. I don't know my scale's kind of accurate. Yeah, that's true. Yourself, um, back. The test is about 16 minutes. Your job is to just relax and to try to breathe normally. And just so you know, you are getting a lot of fresh air right through okay. this. Okay. All right, so what you're going to do now is just this for the next 16 minutes, and then the test is done. That's it. Yeah, you want to get a shot of this. This is the result? Yes. Okay, so this is my resting metabolic rate. If you were to do nothing all day, but sit in a chair mm -hmm. for 24 hours, it would take about 2,031 calories just to keep your functions going. Gotcha. What this doesn't include is you going to the bathroom, eating, working out. So obviously the amount of calories you need, which you probably know how many calories you ingest. Yeah, probably. I would guess probably somewhere around 3,000. Yes. Yeah. So that's what you need to maintain your body. So if you right. only ate this, you would right. lose. You would lose. Right, right, right. Now this is interesting. This 115 percent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If we were to predict without measuring what your resting metabolic rate would be. Mm -hmm. It would be less than this. Gotcha. So you actually have a an elevated metabolism. But right. It makes sense. You carry a lot of muscle. Right. You eat a lot of food and you exercise how many days per week? Six, seven. Yes. Yeah. So those are the things that if somebody wants a fast metabolism, they eat a lot of food and they're active. Right, nearly right, every day. right. Very interesting. I'm I'm a little bit surprised by this result just because I have a feeling that if you were to do this test while I was say like in the later stages of a contest prep when I'm getting very lean, I bet you it would be less than 100%. It would almost yes, definitely. Yes, you, there's no doubt you would be lower. Yeah, you yeah, suppressed. yeah. And even relative to like averages, I think it would be low because I have to diet on low calories. But when I'm in my off season, I'm eating a lot. My metabolism is really fast. Yes. I can get away with eating more. Uh, and then the other thing to consider is we did one test. If this were a research study, mm -hmm. I would do another test and take the lower value. It sounds about right though, based on what I eat and what I would yes. expect it to be. It sounds yes. about dead on. Do you mind if I just ask a couple quick questions? So first, what is the, what is the name of this technology? This is called a Cosmed Fitmate Pro. Okay. And it's made out of Italy. I've never actually heard of that, so it's interesting. Does it have like, is that the commercial name or is that like why you call it? That's, that's, that that's is the commercial name. Yep. Okay, mm -hmm. So this device was hooked up to me, I breathed into it. What is it measuring? So essentially what it's doing, it's telling you how many calories you burn over an entire day. There's two ways to do that. One way is called direct calorimetry. So we're measuring your calories. Calorie is heat. So it's essentially, you can measure your metabolism through heat production. We call that direct calorimetry. We did not do that. We used another method that's called indirect calorimetry or the measure of heat. So what this machine does, it measures how much oxygen you consume. The nice thing about this method is for every liter of oxygen that you consume or that I consume, it expends about five calories of energy. So that's the, the process or the mechanism for how we're estimating your metabolic rate. Um, so the test took 17 minutes. Why that duration and not say a minute or two? One, this is a research grade machine. So it's, there are devices out there that will claim to do it in a minute or two, but you always want to have a period of time where you're settled down, where you're maybe a little nervous. If you walked to the facility, like you drove here, you want time where your heart rate goes down because anything that keeps your, you elevated, right. it's going to give you a false elevated metabolic rate. Right. So that's the first answer. The second answer is two minutes of this are just calibrations. The actual test is 15 minutes. The first five minutes of that, it's data that's just thrown out. Again, um, we're just trying to get 
a nice, consistent okay. oxygen consumption flow. The last 10 minutes, we take an average. Oh, okay, interesting. Mm. Every single breath you took. Gotcha. gotcha. So that's why you can feel good about the day to day. Yeah, yeah. Because I was a little bit concerned, because at the beginning, I was like, I felt a little bit claustrophobic with the mask on, and I was like, I felt like I was like taking in bigger breaths, but after a couple minutes, I like totally settled down, like yes. you said, but that was all junk data anyway. So. And, and something else I would say for people that want to get this done, don't go to a facility that will do it after lunch or at night. Every time you eat food, it raises it your raises calories. Your so this has to be done in the morning. You notice too, we turned out the lights, it was black yes. in here. Anything we can do to keep you relaxed. Ah, that's why the lights are off. Okay, yes. that was going to be my next off, question. You're laying down. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thanks for the explanation. Yeah, thank you. So Stephanie just got her body fat percentage tested yes. and she shredded. I'm not shredded. I think you are. <laughs> Jeff guessed I was between 18 and 20%. Last night, yeah, Last night. yeah. But I see your striations now, I'm gonna change my mind. <laughs> So I'm actually 13.6% body right. fat. And according to this, you were like 9 or something, right? 8.9. 8.9 and 13 according to the other one. Alright, I'm going to get mine done now. Do I need to... Take your shirt off. Yes. You don't have to have yeah. naked, though. Right. What's Stephanie's date of birth? Oh, you're killing me. February 25th, 1900. Right, That's I'm going to <laughs> so this device is called body metrics yes and it differs from calipers in that you also have the ultrasound is that right yeah so basically they will take skin fold measurements as sort of like a comparison to the ultrasound so just to make sure that nothing is really out of whack the software takes into account the ultrasound measurements my weight and gender yep. and athletic type and then it takes all the data from the ultrasound and spits out a number from the algorithm which in my case ended up being 7.5 percent the result is lower than what you guys had yes. anticipated and same with me and when i got my dexa done a couple months ago it was 8.4 i'd have to look back on it but i think i was like 163 and now i was one 69 here. Gained six pounds of muscle, lost the Yeah, <laughs> lost the <laughs> <laughs> The only thing for me that's probably really useful is just comparing yourself to yourself. Yeah, you have to, machine. yeah. Yeah, if you have the same machine, same conditions, Thanks. compare yourself yeah. over time, you're going to be able to accurately track changes, but you might not necessarily be able to pin down a completely accurate first measurement, even though I thought you did a really good job. <laughs> Do I need to? You actually can beat your shirt oh, okay. off. Right. I'll just yeah. on that. I mean, it's just eight electrodes, wrist Oh, pants. okay. Gotcha. And then we need you to lay down for between seven to 10 minutes before I start. It's pretty simple. Obviously, whenever you're moving and standing, you have a fluid shift happening in your body based on gravity. The reason we have you lay down is so that the, at least the somewhat amount of the extracellular water can just settle. This is called BIA? Yeah. Or bioelectrical yeah. impedance? Okay. I'm down. That is mostly going to measure total body water and then it also categorizes it intra and extra cellular compartments. Right. The machine is going to read the resistance as the electricity travels through your body, use that to estimate the total amount of water that is in your body. This particular machine is very fancy and is able to read intracellular water versus extracellular water. It will subtract the extracellular from the total body water and give you an estimate of where that water is in your body. This took this test took 17 seconds or is that seconds. 18 seconds? Yeah, okay. This is the result here. It's estimating your resting energy expenditure. How, what was it? It was 2,000. Yeah, it was 2,000 and something. Much and here accurate. it's eight, around a little bit lower, but still in the same ballpark. It estimates specifically skeletal muscle mass because it's always important to remember that fat-free mass is not just muscle; it's right. bone, it's organs. You know. So I'm not 169 pounds of pure muscle. No. <laughs> yeah, that is a lot of fat-free mass out of 169. That is uh, true. Yeah, yeah that's so fat four. mass. <laughs> yeah. So we're seeing obviously that this yeah. thing. Yeah. Estimates it's pretty low. From what we estimated with the, the ultrasound, that's... That seems about down, consistently down, lower yeah. though, because it was so, about the same for Stephanie. Stephanie. So still probably pretty good for tracking changes. Yeah. yeah it'll be accurately yeah. inaccurate. Yeah. Right, right. So I have 33 liters of water inside my cells, inside. 20 liters outside my cells, yes. and my total body water is 53 liters, so I'm 70% water right. by composition. That's yeah. pretty crazy. That's, well, that's a good amount of water in your body. 
Yeah. And it sounds like that's a lot extracellularly, but I guess a lot of that, it, that doesn't just mean it's under my skin. <laughs> like most right. people are like extracellular means you're holding water yes. under your skin. It's also like between your organs and just everywhere yes. that would, would work. It sounds like blood yeah. volume. Also. Right, exactly. So. This is very cool. I find this, this could like inform future stuff about peaking in a, in a way that I don't think anyone is really doing it. Yeah. Hopefully that was informative. We're gonna go for a leg workout now at the lab gym where they're doing a one rep max testing study of some sort. Time, 9.30. 9.30. So this is their new piece of equipment. The last day we were in here, this hadn't arrived yet, but this is the new piece of prime equipment. This is similar to the one that, that, that I used with Josh Vogel at MI40, so you can load different parts of the range of motion more or less heavily by adjusting this cam, I'm assuming. Two scoops. What flavor is this? Raspberry lemonade. And then you mix it with two raspberry lemonade high gotcha. volume. Raspberry lemonade, high volume. One scoop, two scoop. All right, let's hit some legs. So guys, this workout was more or less a fun freestyled workout where Stephanie and I wanted to play around with some of the lab's equipment and just get a good pump without having to worry about following a set structure for that day. Uh, so just keep that in mind, but what I do want to comment on is my body fat percentage results and what they mean and how to interpret them. I think James Krieger nailed this one when he compared getting a body fat percentage analysis to getting a weather report. When a weatherman reports the weather, he's reporting a prediction, not a measurement. And the only way to truly measure one's body fat is to have them die and run an autopsy. But since no one wants their body fat percentage that badly, the best that we can do is predict what it might be. All the technologies that we do have have fairly large error rates, and I'll just cover the few that I've done personally. I'll start with the bioelectrical impedance. It's really good for measuring water, but not for body fat, because the electrical current will take the path of least resistance, which generally is not through fat, implying that if you have a lot of fat under your skin, it might just completely miss it, which is why BIA tends to underpredict body fat just like it did in my case with the 3% body fat measurement. It's also based off of a manufacturer's estimate based on a group of people who had their body fats measured using another method. So it's basically an estimate of an estimate. In a study on bodybuilders, it's been shown to have an error rate as high as 8%. Uh, so basically it's plausible that I could be as high as 11% or hell, maybe even higher, who knows. The ultrasound method gave me a body fat percentage of 7.5%, which was obviously closer to where I'd expect to be than 3%, but like still an underestimate. A few studies have suggested that there is generally strong agreement between the body metrics ultrasound device that we used and skin folds. A 2014 paper in obese and overweight subjects showed that 21% of the time it underpredicted body fat by greater than 4%. So just using that 4% figure as a rough ballpark, again, I could be as high as 11.5%. Finally, like I mentioned in the vlog, I did have a DEXA scan done four months ago. I weighed in just over 160 63 pounds that day and my body fat was 8.4%, uh, which basically means I gained about six pounds and lost a percent of body fat in that time frame, according to these results. Uh, so this seems really unlikely. And again, you'd need to use the same measurement tool to be able to track changes accurately like that. James Krieger cites some research on his blog, which I've linked in the description, that estimates an average error rate of one to 2% with the DEXA. But one study in bodybuilders showed individual error rates as high as 4%. So running with the least charitable numbers for me of 4%, I could be as high as 12.4%. And I think it's worth noting that DEXA tends to be less reliable in leaner populations. So like bodybuilders, for example. So ultimately pulling all of these results together, it looks like my body fat is somewhere in the three to 12% range. And I'll just finish by saying that I think it's a bit trivial to make assumptions of what someone's body fat percentage is based on how they look, just because of how crude our current technology is anyway. I personally find that it's better to shoot for a goal physique based off of visual factors, so just assessing how you look or having a coach do it for you, tracking your body weight over time, and perhaps most importantly, progressing in the gym. If you do have access to technology to measure body fat percentage, use it to track changes and don't get bogged down with standalone measurements, which is how it's generally used in an exercise science lab setting anyway. Okay, so I hope the workout voiceover was informative and I'll see you guys in the next clip. Twice. I personally find, I find three to feel the most natural for me. It's like, that it's heavier at the bottom and then it gets a little easier throughout. It feels so good. Love yes. it. Yeah, it's such a good machine. It's smooth. What's going on everyone? Uh, so first I just wanna say thank you so much for watching the video. I hope that you liked it. Couple quick things. First, if you like the video. Like the video. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. 
Stephanie has a female version of all this, so all of the results of her testing is on her channel, so I'll put a link to that in the description. Also, please show Dr. Bill Campbell some love. Uh, not all academic institutions are as generous with their time and resources as he was, so I just want to thank him so much. It would give me a lot of pleasure if you guys went and checked out his Instagram. Um, so it's just Bill Campbell PhD, all one word. I've also got his Instagram linked in the description, so go please check it out. He's doing some awesome work. Also, Stephanie is going to be part of a case study that has to do with the 10,000 calorie challenge and taking measurements before and after data. Which means that I have to actually do a 10,000 calorie yeah, that's challenge. Right. That's right. <laughs> also, the Glute Science Explained video. It's my most popular video ever. If you guys haven't seen it yet, check that one out. Um, thank you guys so much once again for watching. I'll see you in the next video.